and girls and children of all ages get ready for the Rillian Raven chapter 8 <clears throat> Rohan wipes some stray foam from his lip as he set his mug down what do you mean someone came looking for the raven I thought you said the little mage told you the thing was useless that's what I thought replied Clintan but there was Levan at my door after all these years. <clears throat> what do you mean someone's looking for it? I demanded of Lee Van. Just what I said. That little mage, Claris, looked me up yesterday. He said there was someone asking if he knew about the raven. He says all he told them was that he'd do some digging. Then he came to me hoping to broker a deal. He says he thinks there's some serious coin involved. I paid that stupid mage to keep the whole thing quiet. Maybe that's why he came to find us first, without giving anything away. Well, it would be nice after all that time and effort to get some coin. Still, part of that story doesn't make sense. If someone really was looking for the raven after all this time, why would they come to the mage guild in Cave Town? I don't know. Lots of weird artifacts end up in town, here, because of the caves, either at Tex and Edna's or somewhere else. It might be a reasonable place to start. Maybe. What was Clarice's plan? <laughs> like I say, he wants a piece of the action to broker the deal. We bring in the raven, he gets us our gold. How much gold? He didn't say. He just wanted to see if we had the raven or not. I guess he ran into me first. You gonna let me in? Sure, I said, and let the other warrior in. The years had put lines in his face, but he moved with cat-like grace, and I knew he was still a dangerous fighter. I kept one eye on him as always. So do you have it? There it is, up on that shelf. I indicated a small bookshelf in my room where the raven sat innocuously. To tell the truth, I had all but forgotten about it. Me too, you mind? Help yourself. He reached up and took the raven in his hand. He held it out to take a closer look. It looks just like I remember. Any reason it shouldn't? No, I guess not. Just seems weird. Anyway, you want to take this to Claris with me? You're counting yourself in? I think I got it coming, don't you? There was now a subtle tension in the air. Levan did have a point, I guess and I didn't want him as an enemy needlessly. Sure, no problem. Still, I think we should think this over some. Why? I would have thought you'd be glad to get rid of this finally, and at a profit. It still bugs me that out of every possible place in this world, someone has zeroed in on Cave Town. Seems like too much of a coincidence. Maybe, but I could use some cash. Besides, it's been years since Soros and his gang I'm willing to take the risk. I thought about it for a while. Something inside me said this just didn't add up. I'd learned over the years to listen to that voice. You know what? I'm not. Not what? Not willing to take that risk. I don't think we should let Claris or anyone else know we have the raven. Just tell Claris I threw it in the river. No. <clears throat> Say what? No. I need the gold. I'm for taking the raven to Claris. If you don't want to come along, fine. I'll even bring you half the take. But I'm for going, Clintan. Now there was a lot of tension in the room. My sword was in its scabbard hanging on the wall just to my right. Whether I could get to it or not before Lee Van Drew was debatable. Then again, the room was small for sword fighting. My dagger was on a sitting chair among some of my clothes. Levan had his strapped to his hip. Either way, I was at a disadvantage. 
I could grapple him, I suppose, but nothing ever good happened in a fight when it went to the ground. You were always an asshole. And you always were too cautious. Now let me pass in peace. I give you my word I'll return with your gold. I squinted my eyes and regarded him coolly. I could see his muscles tense, getting ready to strike. I'll allow that you may be right. But I think we should find out more about who's buying. A little more time after all these years shouldn't make that much difference. I didn't move even an inch, but I planned the exact move I'd make to reach for my sword. Lee Van stared long and hard at me with those empty eyes of his. He was loyal after a fashion, but with him, it was all a calculation. There was no human emotion in there at all. I could almost see him adding up the different courses of action and their probable outcomes. After a long minute, he reached back and replaced the raven on the shelf. He put his hands up in a gesture of peace and said, Okay, Clinton, you win for now. Will you come talk to Claris then? Let's leave it till tomorrow. It's late. I'll go with you mid-morning, fair enough? Fair enough, Lee Van said as he sauntered towards the door. Mid-morning tomorrow. I'll be here waiting for you. Sure thing, Clintan. Lee Van waved goodbye and walked out the door. I closed it after him and breathed slightly easier. Still, I didn't trust him. I was between him and money, and that was a bad place to be. So did you go see the mage at the mage guild the next day? Rohan asked. Nope. Turned out he came to see me later that night. You see, Lee Van didn't want to wait. I was starting into my evening routine, getting ready for bed, when there was a frantic knocking on my door. Who's there? I demanded. It's Claris, the mage, was the reply. Let me in, please. I opened the door. And sure enough, looking disheveled was the little mage from the guild. Claris, what the hell are you doing here? Lee Van told me, Lee Van told me where you were staying before he met the cloaked wizard. What are you talking about? The cloaked wizard, he doesn't want anyone knowing who he is. So he wears this cloak that obscures his features. Some wizards really like their anonymity. Lee Van came tonight to meet him. We were supposed to come together tomorrow. Well, he didn't wait. And thank your lucky stars he didn't, because now you have a chance to get out of here. What do you mean? Why should I leave? Because Lee Van is dead. The cloaked wizard killed him. What? Lee Van is dead. You know for sure? I saw it through a spy hole. The cloaked wizard killed him when Lee Van didn't have the raven. Better tell me the whole story. There isn't time. We need to leave. What do you mean we? Look. Look. The cloaked wizard knows I'm connected to this too. I'm not safe here either. I'm coming with you. What? Look, this cloaked wizard showed up two days ago at the guild asking about the raven. I had never told anyone about you two having it. But I do broker a lot of deals. So maybe that's why the cloaked wizard asked me if I knew anything about it. I said that I didn't, but I would look around. I thought of you two and I found Lee Van at the tavern. I thought there might be some gold in it for all of us. Lee Van said he'd go find you. Well, just tonight, he shows up at the guild asking for me. He tells me you have the raven and where you're staying. Then he asks to see the cloaked wizard. Since the cloaked one is staying right at the guild, I go get him and arrange a private meeting room. Of course, I use the spy hole to watch the entire exchange without being noticed. What happened? The cloaked one got right to the point and demanded the raven. Lee Van said he didn't have it, but he knew where it was. The cloaked one demanded to know where, but Lee Van said they needed to discuss the gold first. The cloaked one got enraged and hit Lee Van with a lightning spell, hurting him really badly. Lee Van tried to talk, but the cloaked wizard had gotten too angry with the spell. Lee Van dad died right then and there. So why did you run? Why didn't you just tell the cloaked wizard where I was? You weren't there to see what he did to Lee Van. There's something wrong with him. I don't think he'd have let me live even if I had told him where you were. We really need to leave. He'll find us soon enough. I sat and thought for a few moments. My worst fears had come to pass. There was a powerful wizard hell-bent on acquiring the raven, and he had no problem killing everyone in his path to do it. 
I had to cover all my tracks. Damn it, I thought you said this thing was useless, I barked as I picked up the raven and shook it at him. It is, that's what makes this even worse. How much crazier will that cloaked wizard be when he finds that out? Okay, let's go, I said. I quickly threw together my pack and dressed for the road. I paid up my bill with the night clerk and left quickly with Claris in tow. Winding my way through Cave Town, I brought us to a dark alley. What are we doing here? Claris asked. I, I just have to do one last thing before leaving Cave Town, I replied. I released my dagger from its sheath and said to Claris, Turn around, I'll help you fix up your travel pack for the road. He obliged and I rammed my dagger down between his collarbone and neck. It was a quick, almost painless death, the least I could do for the little mage, who was my second last connection to the raven. I hated doing it, but I knew he would slow me down, and I was scared and wanted to cover all my tracks. Leaving the body in the alley, I walked quickly towards the path leading up to the caves. An idea had occurred to me back at my room for disposing of the raven in a way that would make it hard to find. There were always groups of adventurers going in and out of the caves at all times of the day and night. I wrapped a scarf around my face, then spotted one particularly junior group and approached them. Would you like a good luck talisman for the caves? I asked them while holding out the raven. Only three silver pieces. What's it do? Asked one of the young warriors. It brings luck in all things, I replied. Bullshit, another of the fighters said and the group began moving on. Two silvers, I said. It hasn't seemed to bring you luck, the second fighter said. I'll buy it for a copper, the mage of the party said. You never know what might help. Indeed, sir, young sir, you never know. I handed him the raven, and he gave me one copper piece. I watched them enter the caves. There was a good chance they were going to all wind up dead down there. Then the raven would be buried in the caves away from me. In any case, it was out of my hands and sold inconspicuously for a whole copper piece. I made my way quickly out of town then and started my search. I had to find a freelance thief named Shade. As it turned out, I didn't have to search very far. Shade was traveling with your group not too far away in Mezencant. After digging around a little at the local guilds and asking here and there, I finally found him. I tried to give him a quick death too, but he saw it coming, and I made a mess of it. I do regret that, Clintan said, then took a long pull from his ale. His eyes drooped with the increasing effect of the alcohol. Rohan sat considering the story and shaking his head. So you killed him, and Claris for that matter, just to erase any connection between you and the Raven. Yes, Clintan agreed, but it turned out to be for nothing. He motioned for the barkeep to bring some whiskey to go with the ale. He downed the shot in one gulp. How so? Rohan asked. Because after I killed Shade, I decided that the last place any crazy wizard would look for me was back in Cave Town where it all started. So I came back. The trouble was, the cloaked wizard knew exactly who I was already. She must have missed me when I left town that night, so she sent spies out looking for me. Conveniently, I showed up right back here. She? That's right, she, Clintan slurred. The cloaked wizard was that goddamn witch Marla, back from the dead and mad as hell.